So welcome back to the second installment of the building a redstone computer redstone series. It's been a while since I posted and that's just because of things that have just been going on in my life. Um, I haven't really been able to sit down and make a video. So I figured now I will um, make one. So for the first installment of this series, we're going to be making the ALU, which is what's right here in front of me. This one is a 2-bit uh, ALU, but for the sake of this example and the series, we're going to be making a 4-bit, just so we can have more complex calculations and whatnot. And just as the name ALU, Arithmetic Logic Unit, suggests, this does all the math for the computer. And you might be wondering why this one's so much bigger than other ones you've seen on YouTube, and that's because this is, first of all, my design, so it's, uh, it's not really refined. But also, it's a lot easier to understand and look at and see what's happening and why what's happening as opposed to those small compact ALU designs that I've seen out there. So in the last episode, which by the way, if you haven't seen, I highly suggest you watch that. Out of any episode in this series, I think that one is probably the most essential. It's like the basics of the basics that most people just don't know, but you should definitely go and check that out if you haven't. Link in the description. But anyway, in the last episode, we reviewed logic gates and um, just like the basic like schematic of an ALU uh, and like just the computer in general. So here we're going to be doing the ALU, which is that small block in the middle that we reviewed for like a minute or something. And again, if you haven't seen that episode, I highly suggest you check it out. But for now, let's get right into the ALU. So typically I like to start my builds about 7 blocks above the ground and with that being said I'll just let the video play. I suggest you copy this in your own world and afterwards I'll, we'll uh, get into the explanation part. So what we're building here is the carry-in line and this is basically essential for the ALU to work because it just connects all four bits to each other um, and turns it into a four bit CPU instead of just four one bit CPUs. Again I'll go in depth in the explanation part but yeah I just want to preface that. And of course the last step here is to put the overflow line which is just a 16th bit tells you if you're at 16 and there's only two possible ways to get that which is just 8 and 8 that's it. Lastly, we're just going to label the bits, and that's it for this ALU. Now off to the explanation part.
So right off the bat, looking at this, this might look a little confusing, and um, by the end of this video, hopefully it isn't, you know, as confusing as it was now. I'll try and give you the best in-depth explanation I can, but just for, just to preface what we're doing here, we're just going to review one bit and how it interacts with the other ones. Pretty straightforward. If you watch the X or the uh, first video of this, you realize that this is an XOR gate, actually an inverted XOR gate, um, and it basically just compares these two, if both of them are on. They'll turn off, both of them are off, they'll turn off, but only if one's on, will pass the signal through. Whoops. Whoops again. <laughs> and um, that's pretty straightforward there. Um, it comes into here and goes pass through. This thing right here is more of like a placeholder just to fill in this. It's just another one. You can do one plus one and you'll get two right there. Um, pretty straightforward. But... The more interesting thing is this carry line up here. Basically what it does is it, if it detects that this line is overflown, as in like both of them are turned on, so it can't display more than a one on this side, right? This is the first bit. Then it'll bring it up to the carry line using these two right here and take it up here and then carry it, literally carry it to the next bit, which will display it because obviously this was a two. Now for instance, if I turn both of these on, it's too powerful for even these two lines because this is two and that's one. And the answer we're going to get is um, one plus one plus two plus two, so six. Which should actually be both of these, right? Four and two. So how that'll work is, of course, these two carry through and only one signal's passed through and it goes to two. But this one is two. This one just as a individual piece is also too powerful for this. So it'll carry the line over, but not here. But yeah, no, actually, I'll carry the line over right here, and then, again, quite literally, just carry it over into the next line. So, think of this first bit right here as, like, the first level of, um, like, calculations. It just, like, kind of raw inputs to compare them, really. And then the second line is more of, like, a double-checking line. It, it's, um, it really, it checks if there's, like, a carry, and then moves it to the next one, or whatever the case may be. But um, it's pretty straightforward in my opinion. It might take a little bit to grasp your head around, but um, I think I think this shouldn't be too complicated. Anyway, that's gonna be the end of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.